Hello, this is uh, Matt Nyman, and um, this is a short uh, narrated summary of uh, a talk that Peggy Pearson gave to us on uh, November 21st, 2014, where she was talking about emergency response to disasters. Um, if you remember correctly, if you were there at class, that she talked mostly about the response to Hurricane Katrina which was a pretty formidable task uh, and has uh, clear extensions to uh, the type of response that would be required in the advent of a mega thrust earthquake in Oregon. This slideshow is uh, not narrated from um, a paper or something I've written down so it might be a little choppy and I apologize for that but this will be stuff that will be important for the final. One of the main points uh, that she made during her talk was that the, in the event of a major disaster like Hurricane Katrina uh, or a mega thrust earthquake in Oregon, it would be the vulnerable populations that would be at greatest risk in terms of fatalities and in terms of being impacted by a disaster of any large magnitude. And this was clearly illustrated in her slides of the triage center at the airport where many of the people there were elderly um, or uh, were in economic situations that uh, didn't lend themselves to be uh, have some self-evacuation or, or self-help. So in Oregon, if there was a large or when there is a large mega thrust earthquake and significant damage, uh, emergency response um, will uh, be uh, more vital or will be vital for everyone but it will be especially important for those populations that are uh, at the greatest risk including the elderly, the economically disadvantaged, uh, homeless people and so forth. Um, so that was one of the messages from her presentation. Peggy also outlined that there were common procedures for emergency response to a disaster and here's the five that I wrote down. They include evacuating people from areas uh, that are severely damaged or do not lend themselves to be um, good locales for them to be uh, helped through emergency response. So for the hurricane that included all flooded areas. Now for an earthquake that would include many areas that had significant damage uh, and uh, loss of shelter. So the second response was to make sure these people were uh, given some vital necessities like food and water and then uh, received medical care to decrease the number of fatalities. So as she stated, sometimes this medical care is such that they have to make some pretty dramatic decisions about who would receive further care depending on their potential mortality rate. And that was some pretty harsh um, images and harsh words there. Uh, but just part of the nature of uh, emergency response. So following medical care, there, were, uh, there was trauma care for those people who required extensive uh, um, medical help in term to decrease their potential for, uh, for uh, demise. And then finally was transportation of these people away from the uh, disaster site to places where they can recover um, both physically and potentially economically. So these five steps you should uh, know for the final. Peggy also outlined that there was a very clear chain of command for response to a disaster like an earthquake or hurricane. And, and these make sense, right? First, the uh, chain of command goes to what can be done at the local or with local resources uh, feeding into the county resources and the state um, provides whatever they can to uh, me mediate and mitigate uh, the impacts of the disaster. And then finally, there are federal programs uh, through things like FEMA, uh, which can be called upon in terms of major disasters uh, where there's uh, a huge need for resources. And those requests are usually made from the governor um, to the federal agencies 
uh, so that they can begin to intervene. Now, one of the interesting things I thought about her talk was that for a hurricane event where they can make some estimates of the type of type and magnitude of disaster, uh, this chain of command can be accessed prior to the disaster. So where this system works, or when the system works, the situation uh, can be set up so that the um, the sequence of events are, are started before the actual disaster happens. Now this doesn't always work um, as it should, but uh, is one thing about hurricanes now with earthquakes like the earthquake in Japan in 2011 this is not the case and all of the chain of command responses has occurs after the disaster um, which can have major implications for when resources uh, uh, reach people that are uh, in need of them so that's just an interesting difference uh, between events like hurricanes and events that aren't predicted like uh, earthquakes and resulting things like tsunamis. One of the uh, other interesting aspects of Peggy's talk was also a, a statement that just makes sense and that is coastal areas that are going to be impacted by uh, a tsunami during a megathruster earthquake will require the um, greater evacuation um, following the earthquake and uh, that's mainly because those areas will probably be impacted the most in terms of making them places that will not be um, amenable if you will to uh, to recovering from this disaster and another thing that she mentioned is that there'll be um, a lot of the resources will be simply overwhelmed like she mentioned that cell phones will basically be inoperable because of um, the system being inundated, there'll be lots of loss of electricity because of uh, down lines across the coast range and uh, broken gas and water uh, lines are also a potential. But uh, there'll have to be some measured response in some places and in other places will have to get significant response because of the impact of this event. And the final point I'd like to make in this uh, narrated slideshow is the importance of demographics of the area impacted by a disaster on the response. And one of the, I thought, interesting things about Peggy's talk was her, um, her reflection upon how the people you're trying to help in response to a disaster their characteristics, their age, their economic situation, their um, their home situation, where they live, uh, will will dictate how the response is made. So that was clearly illustrated in her talk about Katrina, where how they responded to um, the earthquake depended on you know who they were treating. So they were treating a lot of elderly people, so that helped to shape the type of treatment that was given uh, and the resources that were used. So uh, in a disaster like a megathrust earthquake along uh, in Oregon, then there would be um, a kind of a different type of response depending on the location and the demographics of those areas. So a, play, a, uh, a town along the coast that has a lot of retirees might have a different type of evacuation process or response process than say a, a suburban or urban setting like in Portland. So I thought that was also a very interesting um, aspect. So that's it. I enjoyed Peggy's talk. It was, uh, it was very interesting and uh, it was kind of neat to hear the inside view of what happened in emergency response. And I hope you found it interesting as well. Um, and I hope this slideshow, narrated slideshow is helpful as well. Thank you.